come with me as we go to the Pokemon Fossil Museum. Hey guys, we're going to Oita. We're going to the Fossil Museum, the Pokemon Fossil Museum here in Oita. And I brought some friends with me. We have, behind me we have, Paulo. Sleepy. Sunny. Hello. And of course we have ZZ behind the camera right now. And we're gonna see what the Pokemon Fossil Museum has. So, let's get going. All right, we have arrived. We're getting suited up to uh, get our camera gear ready. So, are you ready? Yes. We got tickets, we're ready to go. Okay, we're heading over now. What do you guys think is gonna be there? Pikachu. <laughs> Pikachu? What about you? Ditto. Ditto? I hope there's a ditto. Ditto will be awesome. Look at that. We are at the right place, the Pokemon Fossil Museum. And today is December 10th. That Pikachu looks cool. Let's hope we can find him inside. Okay, we've arrived and we're at the entrance. We're not in the museum, but they have an Aerodactyl here with a Pikachu. This looks so cool and clean. Pikachu looks legit right here. Honestly, an Aerodactyl, Aerodactyl with his green eyes. I didn't know Aerodactyl had green eyes. Cool thing here is Pikachu has his hat, an excavator hat as I call it, with a fossil on it. And he has his little bandana. And honestly, if they had a plush of this, we're buying it. Here's all the fossils and skeletons we're gonna see later in this video. So I think the cool thing is these are Pokemon fossils, right? And if we move over to the other side, these are actual dinosaur fossils. So each one is associated to one Pokemon. So we're gonna see and learn today which ones are related to which Pokemon? It's the line to the buy the tickets, I think. But we bought it in advance, so hopefully we don't have to stand in that. Although I think the entrance is right there. Who's that Pokemon? Yeah, that's Pikachu. <laughs> Welcome to the Pokemon Fossil Museum. No money. No money. All right, that's the entrance. Let's go inside. Oh my God. This is our first exhibit. That looks like a T-Rex. This looks like a Tyrannosaurus. Oh, it says Tyrannosaurus. So Tyrannosaurus Rex. And then we have here the Pokemon version of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is in Japanese, Gachogoras. We have Ammonite here. Real world Pokemon. And this is Ammonite. They do look very similar. The shell. I've never seen this animal in real life, to be honest. It looks like, like a squid with a shell on top. I did not know Almanite was that equivalent. You guys have a Pokemon right here. Name that Pokemon. Oh god damn it, it's written there. <laughs> Looks like they show you the gameplay. And then if you look down here, it's like playing Pokemon Red or Blue. Because these are the fossils you got in Gen 1, right? You could choose Almanite or Kabuto. Well, this is the revamped version, and these are the fossils, right? And then if we go further along, we have a fossil here. This right here is the helix fossil, as it says right here, which obviously is almonite. You can tell from the shell right here. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, there's an almonite. Look at that, it's so cute. And of course, this in the game is where you make your fossil Pokemon or bring them to. So it's so cool that they show you, oh they show you the steps, that's what it is. Step one, get the fossil. Step two, bring it here. And step three, you get a Pokemon. So you're telling me, Almanite revolves into Almastar and then Almastar is extinct because the shell got too heavy for it. This is real world stuff. It's like excavation tools. This is the Yupa Chi Discus Paradana. I think that's the special scientific name for the almonite shell. We got the photos here too. This is the armor fossil. Armor gets you to this Pokemon right here. Shieldon. It's Bastidon in his fossil glory. Look at this, it's beautiful. Look at him on a side view, his bones. This Pokemon evolution is similar to the Triceratops. Everyone's favorite. Oh, he's so cute. So the sail fossil, Amarus is here. He's so cute. And the evolved form too. Apparently, it comes from this dinosaur. The Aroda skeleton right here. Archens, this is the plume fossil. This is Kranidos. So the head is what makes this special. It's like Inception, because that's the game. Video game has a Kabutops. I expected to see the Aerodactyl right there in this museum, but it's not. This is the video game museum. Budo's right here, adorable. So it really has four eyes actually. We learned something new. 
the dome fossil. Anareth here is very bright and beautiful. Look at his eyes, they're like clear. <laughs> To give you guys a quick summary, this museum was really well put together. It showed you fossils, real world fossils. It showed you a nice 3D model of Pokemon. Then it even put together some fossils of those Pokemon and some little hidden gems from the video games. Now there was a lot of information in this exhibit, but my favorites were from this board, Ammonite and Amistar actually went extinct because their shell was too heavy. And since it was too heavy, it was unable to catch its prey, which honestly is really sad. It's almost like why evolve into Amistar? Another interesting fact, Shieldon and Bastion were inspired by the Protoceratops and Triceratops. Many of the horns on these dinosaurs grew as they got older. Similar, when Shieldon evolves into Bastion, it gets more horns and spikes on it. Cranitos and Rampartos, what's special? Their heads, they were used for head button. Similar to the Pachycephalosaurus, that is a mouthful. Also, you can see on its head, as it gets older, the horns sort of lighten up and there becomes less of them and they don't out, similar to the Pokemon evolution as well, when Cranitos goes to Rampardos. Aerodactyl is pretty simple where it comes from, it's obviously a pterodactyl. Amara and Aurorus, their really big characteristics are their fins, and the color of their fins change according to their emotion. There's speculative skeletons of Amara and Aurorus right here, it is thought that there were no bones in these parts, and yet they put a skeleton of it in the museum. Odd. Looking for the inspiration, it came from the Amagrasaurus, which has a multifunctional sail, as you can see by its fins. Archin and Archos both have sharp teeth instead of beaks and have solid tails, which are major differences from regular bird Pokemon, such as Pidgeotto. Very interesting fact is Archin could not fly, but Archeops could if it had a long enough run up. And if we were going to go to the similar dinosaur, it's similar to the Archopteryx. These birds also were not able to fly, but they were able to flap their wings. Lilip and Cradily, they essentially are sea barnacles. No hands and no mouth, but it has suction cups, something like a stem and eight tentacles. And a really interesting fact is Lilip actually gained the ability to walk when it evolves into Cradily. It's funny that uh, all these Pokemon were, you know, related to actual animals and dinosaurs. And then we have here Lilip, which is related to a sea lily. It's plant. <laughs> Yanmega, very very simple. They didn't have many uh, fossils for Yanmega or they didn't even have a recreation of Yanmega over there. It's like the least loved Pokemon in this museum. Kabuto and Kabutops. The most interesting fact I found was if you look at the Kabuto picture, there's actually four eyes on it, which apparently those two black dots on its head are eyes and the red dots are also eyes. And if you go to the real life horseshoe crabs, those have five eyes. Four of which you see, two look like nostrils, and then you see the two actual eyes, and then there's one more on the bottom. That's crazy! Anerith and Armaldo were rock bug type Pokemon, similar to old shrimp as we like to call it. Tortuga and Caracosta live mainly in the ocean, but Caracosta actually lived on land a little bit as well. And of course, they're related to the Archilon, which is a huge sea turtle, probably the biggest in history. Relicanth is the ancient fish, and Magikarp is the current fish. So it's like an evolution all the way down the line, which blew my mind. Our favorite, the Tyrant and the Tyrantrum. Obviously those are coming from the T-Rex as you can see and the skeleton they have in there is massive and honestly the Tyrant skeleton was one of the cutest things I've ever seen. It's so adorable. It's very obvious where the inspiration came from. And yeah that's basically the uh, museum in a nutshell and my favorite things that I learned from there. It's time to now go check out the exterior because there's a shop outside that has some really interesting items that you're gonna want to check out. We're in the shop. There is a lot no of limited items here. These keychains are I like huge. This one then they have these keychains of the actual dinosaurs. We have Aerodactyl, Amaros, Bastido, postcards. They do adults. These are cool. These are really cool designs. Oh, it's literally everything that we saw on the walls. Let's see. And even oh, some of the items new. that we uh, saw in person. Nothing new. You can buy a book about it. Or it's a good gift for people. A t shirt. Really cool design. Every single Pokemon and Pikachu in the middle. 
3,000 yen. I like that. Pokemon Fossil oh. Museum. If you put hot water, the Pokemon will pop out? Yeah, it's a color That's change. That's no way. What color? I don't know. I think color will change. That's cool. That's a really cool. I've never heard of that idea. That's really interesting. Really? Bandana. Like what Pikachu's wearing right now. Yeah. Or the YI in black oh. one. Pikachu stickers. It's cute and a good price. It's a medal. So you can get the Pokemon Museum medal. Wow, it like, looks super rare. This is a black t-shirt. What's on it? Oh, it's Pikachu excavating. And it like, has a rock image or a fossil image, these do. They have a plush of the legendary Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet, of course. Which oh, it's is, new? Yeah, this is brand new. This is literally brand new. And the one from Violet. $55 for this one. Also, nice. this one's 55. They're both expensive. The cups are gonna look like this. Example is Aerodactyl pops out like this, which is really cool. We gotta find the perfect Pikachu because these are special edition for this location. But a lot of them are squished on the top. So we gotta find the hat that is not squished. Well, this one. This one's nice. Straight. Just need a little bit. Just yeah, fix his hat a little bit. Yeah. He's so light, light washed. It's like he's dirty and excavated. Yeah, he's like yeah. not bright yellow. Hard worker. Hard worker, yes. He looks like a hard worker. Definitely hire him for our company. This towel looks really nice, actually. I wish they had something else with this design, like a poster. I saw, I saw someone have that. If they had that, that'd be pretty cool. Speaking of a poster, this poster is legit. If we could buy that. These postcards are legitimately cute. Maybe we buy some and send them out to some subscribers out here, huh? <laughs> What'd you think of the museum? Oh, was it bad? A bit small. Unfortunately, everything's in Japanese. <laughs> What's your favorite Pokemon in there? Pikachu. <laughs> well, it's good. You can come over with your kids. Lots of kids. The dragon. The dragon. Dragon. Flying dragon. Flying dragon. Yes. Aerodactyl? Yes. What was my favorite thing? You like the flower. Lily. No. <laughs> My favorite thing was the little Tyrant skeleton. I thought that was really cool.